Hi, welcome back to this side of the firmament. I'm Michaela, and today we're canning up some gravy. Now, if you've been around the block at all when it comes to canning, you'll know that gravy is technically not something that with the FDA says that we're allowed to can at home. I know. Okay, if you don't like that, if you don't like that I'm canning gravy, you can just find a different video to watch right now. This is for the people who want to know how this might turn out. I really struggled back and forth with this. I bounced the idea off my mom. Like, we tried to collaborate our brains. We did all the things. And it kind of went something like this. <clears throat> well, you can can broth. Yeah. But what about the fat? Well, you can can soup. You can can turkey meat. People can bread, so it's not that the flour is going to do something. Well, will the flour turn into a whole big clump in the jar? Well, <clears throat> do we have to add salt to it? Nah. But it's got seasoning in there already. So, yeah. We basically just scanned the gravy, and this is how it worked out. It was good. So, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make gravy from turkey drippings, and then I'm going to sh show you how I canned it, and then I'll show you a recipe I made with the canned gravy, so you have any idea of, like what this would be useful for. So, I hope you enjoy and learn something, and have a great day. My preferred way of cooking a turkey is to utilize a large roaster pan with the tin foil lid. I put the turkey in the pan, add some water to the bottom of it, add some herbs to the water, you know, poultry seasoning type stuff, and then I lid it up. It cooks in the oven for a few hours. I can easily add more water if I need to, but with the lid on, I can generally leave it alone and the hydration and steam infuse the turkey with moisture. I'm left with healthy herby turkey broth at the end of the process and that is what we'll be working with today. I saved my broth in the fridge so it's all jellified right now. Pardon me while I get this all in the pot and warmed up so we can turn it into some gravy. If you have your own way of making gravy, go ahead and follow your own recipe. If you don't know how to make gravy from drippings, that's what I'll be explaining next with the help of my mom in the video. You'll need a whisk. If you don't have a whisk, maybe start with a fork and switch to an immersion blender if you have one. For roughly one turkey's worth of drippings, or around eight cups-ish of broth, put two packets of turkey gravy in a bowl. This is to start thickening the drippings. If you don't have turkey gravy packets, you can just use more flour, but hey, the packets impart flavor and a bit more volume, and who doesn't need more volume and flavor when it comes to gravy? Now add one cup of flour to the bowl and mix it with the gravy packets that were already in the bowl. At this point, you need to understand you will change the amount of flour based on how much broth you have and how flavorful your broth is. The flour will tone down the saltiness or herbiness of your drippings. It will also thicken your drippings so that you will need to add or decrease the amount of flour for how thick you like your gravy. You really just have to keep adjusting it and tasting it as you go. With that in mind, I'll show you how we start that process. Start with four cups of cold water. Slowly add it to the flour using your whisk to squish the small flour balls that start to form. You need to just add this little by little because if you just fill the bowl with water with all of that dry flour, you won't get the consistency that you need to pour it into the whole pot of broth. This might appear smooth, but you have to pay close attention to squish the dumplings. If you add clumps to the broth, you will have little doughy lumps that aren't the best, but they aren't the worst either, so don't panic if that happens. Just pay close attention at this point to really thin it out. Use your whisk in the side of the bowl and don't add water too fast because the more water that's in there, the more you have to chase the little clumps around before you can squish them.
Obviously, I sped that process up a lot. Be patient while you make it yourself. Eventually, the lumps do go away. Now, with your drippings hot in the pot on the stove, you're going to slowly add the flour batter in while you stir. Put a utensil in the pot to stop some of the splashing of hot liquid while you pour the batter in. That's a really helpful tip. You need to continuously stir while you add the batter in. If you just leave it alone, you might end up with a big clump of noodley type stuff in your drippings. At the bottom of the bowl, we found some of those hiding clumps. Take the chance to squish them before you pour it into your broth. At this point, you need to turn your heat on to about medium and stir, stir, stir. Don't let anything start sticking to the bottom of the pan. Now that your flour is cooked into your drippings, you can taste it to determine where to go from here. It might taste great! Voila! Gravy! But if it's too rich, you need to add some water to thin it out, and you'll probably also need to mix up a little more flour and water batter and repeat the process. Slowly add it in using a whisk, making sure there's no clumps. On the other hand, if it's too bland at this point, you can add garlic salt, more poultry seasoning, or any herbs your family is used to tasting. We decided ours needed more garlic salt and more poultry seasoning. I know that looks like a lot of poultry seasoning, but ours is pretty old and non-aromatic, so if you have some fresher stuff, start with a smaller amount, taste it, and add as you need it. That's usually how my cooking videos end up. <laughs> After thoroughly stirring it and letting it cook in a bit, we're going to taste it again and see what we think. That's better. Just a little more pepper for the finishing touch. We'll mix that in. And this thickness is good for me. It might thicken a little more while it's canning. Either way, I'm happy with this consistency. So, we're moving on.
I filled quart jars with around an inch of headspace. I'm using a pressure canner. First, we'll start with a 10 minute vent. Once your canner comes up to pressure and starts spewing out steam, set a timer for 10 minutes. When 10 minutes is over, close your vent and bring your canner up to pressure watching the dial. Or if you have a weighted pressure canner, add your weight to your canner. For my altitude, the pressure I need to reach is between 10 and 15 pounds. Once your canner has reached pressure, you need to set your timer for the cooking time. Now, gravy is not a food stuff that the government says one can safely can at home. But I follow the policy, your kitchen, your rules, when it comes to food preservation guidelines. So, I set this timer for 90 minutes, as that is the length of time I pressure can meet, and I thought was a safe bet. But, honestly, I stopped the canning process at 80 minutes because of further research I discovered while this gravy was in the canner. I am happy to report that the experiment I have done for all of you, and for me, was perfectly successful and not a waste in the slightest. If you keep watching, I will show you a quick and easy recipe I threw together using this canned gravy. You might think this is all a waste of time because one can just make gravy from a packet and water, but oh no, there's nothing like gravy made from drippings. Besides, some people, like truck drivers, love canned goods to eat on the road, and this is a perfect solution to copious amounts of leftovers after a family meal. As if there's ever any gravy left over after a family meal. <laughs> uh -huh. There's obviously some separation here, but don't worry about that. When you reheat the gravy, it will all mix together again. It was actually really cool to watch because it was like a gravy lava lamp. I made lava lamps, but with gravy. <gasps> This is a little evidence of one of those little clumps getting through. I have a little flower clumpy wad stuck to the side of the jar, but whatever. What are you going to do? I guess chew it. Let me open this jar for you. It's dated 12-8 of 2021 because that's when I did the gravy experiment you just watched. It's now um, about a month later, and this is what it looks like from the outside. The fat layer on the top has turned a nice looking white. As we open it, it makes a nice audible popping sound. I give the lid a little sniff to make sure there's nothing foul about it. And obviously visually inspect it. And if you've ever seen gravy in a fridge before, this is pretty much what it looks like. I'm looking for anything that is furry or green or of a bad color, but I'm not finding anything. So no matter what you think you might see on the video camera, I assure you it looked like a perfectly normal container full of gravy that is cooled down. As I cut into this layer on the top, it's this consistency as it's cool, but I know it will get a little thinner as it warms up again. Next, I'm opening a jar of mixed vegetables that I canned over two years ago. I experimented with taking frozen mixed vegetables in a bag and putting them in jars to make them shelf stable. And it worked awesome, in case you were wondering. You can still see the carrots and the broccoli and the green beans and all the variety and colors, so I'm very excited about that. And I'm excited to see how this works in this recipe. Again, you just visually inspect it, make sure there's nothing foul or furry or anything blinking back at you, and then you continue forward with making your recipe. The vegetables were pretty easy to squish up, but for the recipe I'm making, that didn't make a difference. Okay, from this point forward, I'm just going to kind of let you watch on how I made this turkey and dumpling recipe. It was quite easy, just all thrown together, and it was good. So I hope you enjoy, because we sure did. And they say that its beauty is far beyond compare. It's that land that's called heaven, my soul longs to see. For if Jesus is there, it will be there. Beauties and 
The goal is to make your dough the consistency of pancake batter. Now take it back to the stove top where your turkey vegetable gravy filling concoction is heating. I needed to stir mine to make sure nothing was sticking to the bottom. You need to bring this up to a boil because the next thing you'll do is take the batter you just made and carefully spoon it on top of the hot filling. The dumplings will be cooking right on top of that filling there you see so you need to have that heat up. You don't want to just pour all the batter in one area, but instead make manageable sized dumplings that will come out chewy and very filling. They stick in the bottom of your belly. Once you're finished with the dumplings, you put the lid back on and maintain boiling for about 10 to 12 minutes. This meal is really the epitome of comfort food. It can be done without canned ingredients, but it was a lot easier and nutrient filled. The way I was able to just dump it all together with my pre-prepared food that I was able to make in my own kitchen and know how it was set up. And uh, I'll show you a quick shot of this. I don't really have a fancy plating shot, but um, you'll just have to try it for yourself and find out really how good this was. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to keep up with us. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless.